In a uh, food processing plant, it is uh, common to encounter uh, processing equipment that is involved in some type of heating process. It may be blanching uh, food or pasteurizing food or sterilizing food. And the most common energy source used for heating is uh, steam because it can be easily generated right at the plant facility and also it can be transported easily uh, through pipes to various processing equipment. In this tutorial we will look at uh, some of the important thermodynamic aspects of steam and how they are used in designing heating processes. First, uh, let's look at a diagram that I'm sure you had in your course in physics. So we will create a plot between temperature and uh, heat added uh, to water. And uh, uh, we will look at uh, water at uh, 20 degrees Celsius, represented by this point. So if we add heat to this water, uh, we will increase the temperature of the water, uh, let's say all the way to 100 degrees C. Uh, the amount of heat that is added uh, to raise this temperature is called uh, sensible heat because we can sense the increase in temperature. But if we add heat when the water temperature is 100 degrees C, then there will not be a change in temperature except heat is being added which results in change of phase where water begins to turn into vapor. Now this is pretty common you see if you put a pot of water on a stove. And if we continue adding heat uh, to the water, you will reach a certain point where all of the water has converted into vapor. During this process, the temperature remains constant and the amount of heat being absorbed by water is what we call latent heat of vaporization. Conversely, if we take water vapors that are at 100 degrees C and we try to condense them, uh, we will not see a change in temperature, but there will be enormous amount of heat that will be released to bring the water vapor back into its liquid state. In this uh, conversion of vapor to liquid, uh, the heat released is called heat of condensation. Uh, note that the values of heat of condensation and heat of vaporization are the same. Uh, it's just that uh, heat of vaporization is involved when heat is being added to vaporize liquid into vapors and heat of condensation is the heat released when vapors are condensed back into liquid. And this is the property that is used in uh, uh, providing heat at the uh, location uh, where we need to transfer that heat into a food product. Let's uh, use some numbers that uh, you will see uh, in a few minutes. So at atmospheric pressure, the amount of heat in uh, water at 100 degrees C in a liquid state is uh, about 420 kilojoules per kilogram. Whereas the amount of heat in steam, that is water vapors at 100 degrees C, is 2,676 kilojoules per kilogram. So if we condense that water vapor back to its liquid state, you will be discharging 2,676 minus 420 or 2,256 kilojoules per kilogram of water, that much amount of heat will be discharged, will be available for use in heating a food product. So because of this enormous amount of heat involved in latent heat of vaporization, steam is used most commonly uh, for heating purposes. Let's uh, look at three terms that are uh, important here. Saturated liquid, uh, which refers to water that is at equilibrium with its uh, vapor state at the boiling point. And saturated vapor is a steam that is in equilibrium with the liquid water at boiling point. 
and superheated vapor, which refers to steam, uh, at any pressure and temperature, when the heat content of that vapor is higher than that at saturated vapor state. So uh, we will be looking at uh, these different conditions uh, as we do calculations related to steam. So if we refer back to the diagram we looked at before, uh, as the change of phase takes place from liquid to vapor, of course the composition uh, of that mixture is uh, between liquid and vapor states. Uh, towards the left hand side it is mostly liquid but as more and more heat is added uh, the phase change takes place so we have more and more vapor uh, towards the end. Now the term we use to express uh, the mixture of uh, liquid and vapors uh, in steam is called steam quality. So for our calculations uh, let's use some symbols. Uh, we will use H for enthalpy and we will use uh, a subscript C, small letter C. So it's so HC is the enthalpy of the condensate where condensate is essentially water and HV is the enthalpy of vapors. And another symbol we will use is small letter X with a subscript S. So XS is the steam quality given in fractions. So if this value of XS equals 1, that means it is 100% vapor. If XS is 0, then it is 0% vapor or other word, it is in liquid state. So we can write the following expression to find enthalpy of steam that is a mixture of liquid and vapor anywhere along that line. So H equals HC plus XS in parentheses HV minus HC end of parentheses. So what this equation is saying is that the enthalpy of that liquid vapor mixture of steam equals the enthalpy of the condensate which is purely water plus the steam quality which is in fraction and then the difference of enthalpy between the vapor and the condensate. So if excess equals 1 that means that it is completely in vapor state and if we substitute that we get H equals HC plus HV minus HC and HCs will cancel out so the enthalpy of the steam is the enthalpy of vapors uh, which makes sense because the steam is a uh, hundred percent vapor at that state. On the other hand if XS equals zero that means the there is no vapors it's only in liquid state then of course the enthalpy will equal H equals the enthalpy of the condensate HC which again makes sense that if no phase change has taken place so the enthalpy will be essentially that of the liquid water. We can also write this in a slightly different form this expression as H equals HC plus XSHV minus XSHC and then we can take the quantity HC uh, out of the parentheses uh, in the right hand side and we can rearrange the terms to write H equals in parentheses 1 minus XS times HC plus XS HV. So again these are essentially two different ways of uh, expressing the enthalpy of the steam vapor mixture. So how do we get the values for enthalpy of steam? Now there are uh, uh, two three ways of uh, obtaining value. The first is to use steam tables. So as shown here uh, most uh, textbooks will have values uh, expressed as steam tables. Uh, normally in, in the steam tables uh, there is a column for temperature, uh, another column for vapor pressure, and then uh, columns for specific volume, enthalpy, and entropy. 
Now, our interests are largely in enthalpy values, which are given in kilojoules per kilogram. And quite often, the enthalpy values are given for liquid state, uh, which is Hc, which is the enthalpy of condensate, and also enthalpy of saturated vapors, which is Hv, as we defined earlier. Now, the table uh, contains uh, four different temperatures values of enthalpies so for example here if uh, we wanted to find out the enthalpy at 100 degrees C uh, which is the boiling point of water under atmospheric conditions we find that the enthalpy for the liquid condensate is 419 kilojoules per kilogram and the enthalpy for saturated vapor uh, HV is 2,676. So again, depending on the temperature and pressure, uh, we can find the enthalpy values for steam uh, from this type of table. Another way of obtaining values of steam uh, is uh, where the thermodynamic relationships have been expressed as equations and uh, those equations can be programmed either into a spreadsheet uh, or uh, they, they are also now available on the internet. So these uh, numbers that we get from the steam table uh, tell us how much enthalpy is available uh, when uh, steam is condensed uh, and uh, that enthalpy then becomes available to uh, heat a food product uh, for any of the desired uh, processing operations.